All right, so what uh, we've done so far in this series of uh, trying to upgrade the Blue Life XL from Lollipop to, um, you know, hopefully Pi, uh, what we've done thus far is uh, just built our Lollipop device tree from scratch. And we built that based off of the Wicco uh, MSM8916, the L5510, because it's a very, very similar phone. Um, we have to keep a couple of things in mind. We have to keep in mind what we changed to make it work. We uh, changed some of the vendor files. We changed uh, some of the partition information and uh, a few minor edits here and there to get it to um, function. We also have to keep in mind some of the things that still don't work on that Lollipop ROM that we've built, which is the camera. And uh, there is the essentially the sleep of death is uh, once it goes to sleep, you can wake it up, but the screen is still black, so you can't utilize it without rebooting it, which is obviously no good. Um, and, uh, and there appears to be a slight problem with the GPS. So those three items would need to be addressed before that ROM could be released to the public. Uh, what I want to focus on, though, is upgrading. That's what this series is about. It's about upgrading. How do we upgrade? What does that look like? And can we work through that? Rather than stopping to fix um, the Android at every step of the way to be perfect, hopefully when we're done upgrading everything, maybe then I can go back and work on the different versions and show how we would try to fix something like that. Um, but with that said, our goal here is upgrading. So how would we upgrade from Lollipop to Marshmallow? First, why did we start at Lollipop? Well, because the phone started at Lollipop and all of its vendor files that are proprietary would be uh, Lollipop based and so that just made the most sense because we could pull them directly off the phone and use them. So with that, uh, now we're going to step from lollipop to marshmallow, or at least we're going to attempt to do so, and I, and I have very high hopes that we will be able to do so. The first thing that we need to do is take a look at our our base that we're basing this off of, which is the Wicco MSM 8916 or the L5510. When we open that up, that device there, um, one of the things we can do is look at the branches of it. And when we look at the branches, there's a really cool tool uh, in GitHub and also GitLab has similar type of tools, but you can compare two different branches. So how would we uh, how would we go about comparing these? Well, you would the base branch in this case is CM13.0, and then we see CM12.1. We hit compare. Now this is actually going to be backwards, and I know that sounds really strange. But we are at 12.1 and want to compare what CM13.0 did different. But what this is showing is CM13 and what CM12 did different. So you could use this, but it's sort of backwards way of doing things. So, uh, so this information is all in reverse, and we would want to uh, do it the other way. So uh, really easy for you to do. You can just say base. CM12, and of course it'll say there's nothing to compare, and then you would say compared to CM13.0. Now this is really handy because we have a phone that's very similar, but even if you don't have a phone that's identical, if you find one with the same system on a chip, you can do the same type of comparison and try to see what is changed, what is different, what did they do different so it could work in Marshmallow as opposed to working in Lollipop. And we're going to use this same process throughout the entire uh, the entire upgrading sequence. Now, what's interesting is this will show it to you in two ways: the commits and the files changed. So, what's interesting is files changed is the end result. You could click on files changed and literally go to your tree and make the changes that are the same, and uh, and you'll come to a um, you know, to the end result. Uh, the other way is looking at each commit individually and making the changes there. So you can say, okay, the first commit that's different is they did this, oh, I'm sorry, rather this is in reverse order. 
So this would be the last commit they did, commit on January 8th, 2018. So we would go back. So the first commit they did is coming here to January 24th, 2017. And they changed the init to build as C++ instead of as C. So, and then they changed the, uh, the file to be C++ instead of a C file. So that was the first change that they did. Well, we're just going to look at a couple of them here. And then they changed uh, memcheck, the memcheck, and uh, included something else to fix the building of it. SDB, stdbool.h was included into the build file. Um, the great thing about looking at um, how you get to these changes is there's actually some method to the madness. If you look specifically, and uh, and this is the init L5510 CPP file, if we look specifically at the files changed, and we, uh, we'll just find it here, find the init, um, what was it, init L5510 CPP file, Let's get to the file itself. All right. So if we load this difference here and we see what's different in this file, we see, OK, they did this, they did that, they did this. But you might look at this and say, why did they do this? What was the reason? Why did they get rid of this and put this in its place? And that's what's really handy about looking at each individual commit. You can see, hopefully, there's some kind of memo okay it's more friendly to build non CM ROMs so if you're trying to build something other than CyanogenMod, mod this is very helpful to have it in this way instead of that way and so that's why they did that and now, now you know what they were trying to accomplish or at least hopefully know what they were trying to accomplish um, and then you can see what commits uh, were changed to do what and then you can look and compare this to your tree especially if you're comparing a phone that's not identical to yours or not super close to yours but it has the same system on a chip and you're like what's some of the things they did well they had to do this because of why um, you know why did we change this or why did we change that you know and you can go through and uh, you know uh, you know see what they were hoping to accomplish with uh, with everything hopefully um, and so this is a very very useful tool when you're trying to upgrade from one version of Android to the next which we looked at in a video series before now with that there's two um, main things that you can do with this information well I guess there's there's probably three or four um, the first is if you're if you originally built for instance, in our case, we built our lollipop tree from scratch by using the Wico as a base, and so we just pretty much copied the Wico tree, and then we started editing it to match our phone, and then booted it up. So that is one method that you could use. You could actually just download the CM13.0 version uh, of this device tree that we used to build from scratch last time, and build from scratch again. <coughs> Excuse me. And that way, you can actually, um, you know, just kind of like building the device tree from scratch all over again uh, rather than having to go through the process of updating. Uh, the second thing that you can do is you could look at the files changed, the end result, and just go through each line of your files and say, hey, does that apply to my case or not? And make the same changes. Uh, the third method you could do is either cherry pick these commits, add this to your tree and cherry pick them. Uh, now notice you're going to have some problems because this says it cannot automatically merge. So if you try to pick these commits, you're going to end up with some problems. But uh, seeing as there's only 53 of them, you could actually go through and uh, do them manually if you wanted as well. And you might, as you go along the way, find some that you don't uh, really need to use anyways um, but uh, but so that is an option as well so that's like three 
main options of what you could do. The fourth option is just literally take your CM12.1 tree and try to build it and see what happens. And as errors come up, either refer to this one to see if you can change something or uh, you can go ahead and just try to come up with uh, ways to fix those errors on your own. So those are the four main methods for updating. I want to show, I really want to show um, all four of those methods for updating. So what I'd like to do is uh, this time we'll work kind of with the uh, device tree from scratch method where just like we did for lollipop we're pretty much doing the same thing for marshmallow we're just going to build that device tree from scratch which is what we've kind of seen before uh, and then hopefully when we go from marshmallow to lollipop I want to show um, kind of doing the files changed method and uh, then um, hopefully going from lollipop to Oreo will work through the commits method uh, or I may switch up the order a little bit but that's kind of the goal and then finally uh, if if we even get there uh, Oreo to Pi hopefully uh, we'll, we'll just try building and see what happens and see if we have to make any changes along the way so um, that's kind of our goal that's what we're going to be doing um, you know this is just one snapshot because we have this device wicko tree um, we also need to change the um, the vendor tree is going to need some changing. We're going to have to compare those to see what's changed in those. Uh, we're going to have to uh, take a look at the kernel tree and see what's changed in the kernel. And typically in Android builds, the kernel is going to be the biggest change. The most things are going to change typically in the kernel. Um, a lot of proprietary vendor blobs may change over time as well but the kernel is going to be the key part where a lot of changes are going to take place. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. We have our Android kernel Wicko MSM 8916. So we'll open that up. We're going to look at our branches. We're going to compare. And remember, we need to turn this around backwards, so we're going to say we're 12, and we want to look at 13's changes and see what we get there. And uh, there's 183 files that were changed and uh, lots of interesting little things that we could look at along the way. So that's really neat. Um, but so this is what we're going to be doing and uh, so we're going to kind of take the approach of doing a device tree from scratch this time and then next time we'll try uh, doing like uh, the file upgrade or doing the one commit at a time uh, changes and see what we get. So hopefully this will be uh, interesting to follow along with. Hopefully this gives you some pointers if you're trying to do this yourself, how you can find a similar device tree, take a look at it and see what changes you're going to need to make as well.